Hello YouTube. This is a video that I have got quite a few requests for and uh, so I am going to oblige you and do it. It is about the Rockwell hardness of various manufacturer knives. So um, I tested a group here. I don't want to move the camera too much so it doesn't bounce around but I tested a pretty big group here and I just want to tell you what I found. But before I do, uh, there's a couple things I want to touch on. Uh, Rockwell hardness is measured in the Rockwell C scale. Um, I have a an older Clark hardness tester that I was using. It's pretty accurate. Um, it is not a $20,000, $30,000 a scientific research one, but it is probably in today's dollars, it was probably about five or eight grand new, something in there. Uh, it's a big heavy machine so and it's a little finicky at times as well but um so these numbers are pretty accurate um you know within a point or so one way or the other and uh the knives are much further apart than a point or so which leads me to my next important point um rockwell hardness is not the only determining factor when it comes to uh, edge retention. So just because you see a certain number on a certain uh, one of these knives, uh, a higher number doesn't even necessarily mean a better steel, and it certainly doesn't always mean a better uh, edge retaining steel. So I think that's an important uh, thing for me to mention, that just because this is higher on the scale, there are other things involved in edge retention like carbides and some of these steels have a lot of vanadium so it forms vanadium carbides which helps in wear resistance even at lower hardnesses so don't take these numbers as being uh, objective better or less good edge retention to a point uh, hard hardness is probably 60 70 percent of the equation but it's not a hundred percent of the equation so with that in mind uh i, I want to walk through a couple of the knives and i'm going to start uh, I'm, I have a feeling I'm going to do another one of these videos, but I'm going to start with the group that I tested this particular time. And let's start out with a classic. Uh, this is a case. I think this is a Stockman. Uh, but case slip joint. Uh, this is their stainless. I believe it's some manner of 420 or 420 HC. I don't know if they have the HC, but it's it's some, some manner of 420. And this rock weld out at 54 Rockwell. So this guy Rockwelled at 54 Rockwell. All right. Here is a Shatton Morgan. This is a fantastic knife. This is this is a canoe pattern um, by Shatton Morgan and Queen Cutlery. Same, same company. I really like this knife. Uh, but it is also at 54, which is acceptable for, and this is 1095 carbon steel which is acceptable for, for a blade, but it's it's not certainly not high performance. And particularly with something like this, where it's a simple carbon steel, uh, it could surely have been run harder. I, I wish that it had been. But anyway, same as the case, same style as the case, same hardness as the case, 54. Next up is the Terminus. Uh, okay, so the Terminus, is a SOG, S-O-G. Uh, I really like this thing. Uh, I like slip joints, but this is sort of modern, modern design. It's got a pocket clip, it's very light, and they use BD-1 steel on it. Carpenter's BD-1 steel. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to review this knife, but anyway, this came out at 56 Rockwell with BD-1 steel. Now we're going to go a little out of order here. Um, yeah, we're going to go a little out of order because we're going to go to the Mannix 2 Lightweight, also with Carpenter BD-1 steel. And this guy came out at 57. So Terminus 56, BD-1 57. Okay, uh, and now we're gonna jump out of order because I wanna go to 
the Spyderco Polestar. Uh, my, my knives are kind of dirty here because I'm one of these guys who uses them. Uh, and they get dirty when they when you use them. So they're in my EDC rotation. I guess I should clean them up a little bit before I take a video. But anyway, this guy is running 60 Rockwell. So, and I tested it three times because was, I was, uh, if you can see, see those three dots? Make that four times. I tested it four times because um, it's like, really? Um, and uh, so this guy was running 60, uh, maybe even 60 and a half. And uh, it's the same steel as these two other ones, but they're running it, in the case of the Terminus, four points harder. Four points is enough to make a difference. That'll be noticeable. That'll be noticeable. So thumbs up for the Pulsar BD one. I, I hope these other guys, well, the other guys, Spyderco runs their BD one a little harder as well. Okay, next up on the list is, uh, again, we were a little bit out of order. This is the Kershaw, the Emerson Kershaw. The model on this is the 6034. And this is running uh, your garden variety 8CR14 MOV uh, Chinese steel. And this is run at 58. So this should be all right. 58, MOV uh, 14. 14 MOV. I know some other manufacturers run it softer, but this particular one is, is running at 58. Now, here's something else that's interesting uh, for you. This is about a 12-year-old model. I grubbed up to, man, when I'm looking at it under the light, my, light, my uh, knives are all grubbed up. Um, VG10, 10 or 12 years ago, uh, this model was out. And uh, I've had it since then. And this came in at, uh, let me find it on my list here. This one came in, it's called, I think this is called the Dialex, at 57.5 VG10. This is the newer Mini Jess Horn. I don't know why I really like these uh, Jess Horn Minis by uh, Spyderco. This one came in at 59. So they they're running it a couple points harder these days than they were 12 years ago. Just just an interesting observation. These those would both be Seki City Japan knives. So uh, they were run at that, which brings us to again used on my keychain all the time. This guy goes everywhere. It's probably about time to sharpen it. Uh, ZDP straight ZDP. This is not laminated. This is a straight ZDP. You can see. I have put a couple of divots in there, tested it twice. Uh, interestingly, you know, somebody might say, oh, well, you're ruining all your knives by putting these holes in them. Now, these are these are divots of honor, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and I use them. Again, I'm not collecting them and going to resell them at some point. I, I use them. This came in uh, ZDP at 62. So we're, we're, we're moving on up the Rockwell scale. Moving on up. And last but not least, and this... I did a little video on this guy specifically and got all kinds of uh, feedback, mostly positive. I had a couple guys, uh, actually other knife makers, you know, oh, it's impossible, it's impossible, because steel can't get that hard, blah, 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 it's like glass. Oh my gosh. Yes, it can get that hard. This is Maximet. Um, this is north of uh, 70 after the quench, and then uh, they, they uh, temper it down. I got 67.5 on this. So it's interesting, and I just want to show you something here that may be of interest to you. Here's this SOG SOG, uh, and take a look at the size. Let's see if I can get the, a good focus for you. Take a look at the size of the divot, right? Take a look at the size of the divot on there. It's a pretty good size. Now, Maximet. Take a look at the size of the divot on there. Visibly smaller. It's a diamond penetrator that pushes into the steel and it measures, there's a preload weight and then a load weight. And it measures the amount of distance that the penetrator pushed into the steel. And that's how they come up with the Rockwell, in this case, C measurement. So this uh, tested at 67.5, 67.5. And uh, I like this. I like the Mannix in general. I think it's a really cool, 
design. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to put this through some more of its paces. But So this was the winner of this round, as I expected it would be uh, with, with its Rockwell hardness. And in edge retention tests, I have a little chart on my website. Um, I mean, just, just smoked everything else. Uh, it, don't try to pry anything with it. Um, don't try to poke uh, drywall with it. Don't try to you know, do anything other than cut relatively softer materials. But if that's what you're going to do, open in boxes and these sorts of things, this will treat you good. It'll stay sharp for a long time anyway. And you'll have to have some skills to sharpen it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, I'm going to do at least one more of these uh, reviews, not reviews, but uh, Rockwell tests on some more of my production knives. I want to get S30VN in the mix. So maybe some S90V. Here's a native sprint run. Uh, I also have some S110V in the form of a uh, the the blue and purple purplish blurple uh, Spyderco uh, PM2. So some more coming up. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.